Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 11 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. Last episode we talked about the pile driver, the episode before that we talked about the boring machine. So this is the third episode in our mining machines series. Um, saga, I guess you could say. Um, the Sonic Borer is my favorite mining machine. I think it's the most versatile. Um, it's also the most interesting. Um, it digs in a very unique way I haven't seen done in other mods. So uh, you could probably can figure out what, how from the name. But anyway, let's see how to make it. So the Sonic Borer is crafted quite simply with two steel ingots, a piece of liquid pipe, three base panels, some iron bars, and a compressor. Now we haven't made that yet, so let's take a look. The compressor is simply a gear s completely surrounded in steel ingots. So a gear and eight steel ingots gives you a compressor. Like I said at the very beginning of this tutorial series, rotary craft requires a lot of steel. That's why we have the extractor. But anyway, now you can get the sonic bore. Um, we'll take a look at it, see what it looks like. It's pretty cool looking. I like it. Like a big gun, which is basically what it is. Uh, it receives power from the back of whichever direction it happens to be facing. Um, because if you notice, I can point it in any direction, including up and down, which is great. Um, now, let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to place my uh, Sonic 4. Place it right here. Nope, turn it that way. I'm not really going to turn this thing on um, at full power, because then it would destroy my landscape. <laughs> but let's just see how to power this thing. Um, it requires... 65 kilowatts at 4 kilonewton meters. So 65 kilowatts is the output of a gasoline engine. So we might think that we can use a gasoline engine um, to power this. So let's try it. We will give it some uh, ethanol crystals. Now we need the 4096. So in order to get that out of a gas engine, you would have to give it some gearboxes. You would need a 16 to 1 gearbox, and you would also need a additional 2 to 1 gearbox. You need a 32 to 1 gear ratio to get from 128 newton meters of torque, which is what this is putting out, up to 4096. And you would use steel for these gearboxes. I'm just using bedrock so I don't have to put lubricant in them. So I'll put that there. Now we're at 4096 at 16 radians per second, but you'll notice something about the sonic bore. It's not doing anything. Um, the number of the pressure number at the top should be climbing, but it isn't. Um, it turns out that you need a higher speed. So I'm not sure why the speed requirement is not mentioned in the book, um, but you do need higher speed than 16. Uh, I've, I've discovered that that speed requirement is 32. So uh, you could you could you would have to put two gasoline engines next to each other and use shaft junctions to put it, in which case you wouldn't need a two to, uh, to one gearbox anymore. You would just use a bevel gear, a shaft junction, and a 16 gearbox, and that would give you what you required, and it would work. Um, I have done it. Um, but an easier method would just be to use a performance engine and give it some additives, which would be my preferred method of powering the Sonic Bore. I think that's probably the um, best way to do it. Um, because you're probably going to be taking this around to different places uh, it, underground and placing it down and mining with it. So a hydrokinetic engine, while it would be great, uh, since it's got a huge setup, you wouldn't want to set up a hydrokinetic engine, uh, power it to the, to the full or, or half or a quarter, which is what you would need, one quarter of a hydrokinetic engine. And, um, and then set that up just to mine with this thing just to take it down and move it somewhere else. So I think a performance engine is definitely the way to go to power this, but that's just my personal opinion, just because you're going to be moving it around. Now, the, all of these mining machines have a downside. Um, the pile driver destroyed everything and had a huge power requirement. The tunnel bore can only mine horizontally. Um, so what is the downside of the sonic bore? Well, the downside of the sonic bore is that it does not collect any items. Um, when it breaks the blocks, the items just the blocks just fall where they land, where they were, um, just like if you had broken them and then not picked them up, they just fall to the ground. Um, so you got to pick them up in some other way, and that is why we're going to look at the item vacuum. I could have talked about this back during the auto farm, but I thought I would uh, I'd talk about it right now. So the item vacuum is power is crafted, not powered, crafted with three black wool blocks, uh, an impeller, 
four steel ingots, and a chest. And what the item vacuum does, simply, is that it sucks up items. It vacuums them up. Um, it only requires 16 kilowatts, so that's just a steam engine, which is, you know, great. Uh, so let's give it power. It can take power from any side. And watch what happens. Let me grab some stone here. Watch what happens when I chuck the stone on the ground. It gets sucked up really, really quickly. And look at the range on this thing. That's just a steam engine powering it. And we can go all the way to here. So this is like our maximum range. Is this block? Let's see how far away in or, yeah, okay. So this is as far away as we can get from that uh, from that thing. So look at this massive, basically this entire area would get serviced by this one item vacuum. So these things have a huge range. Um, so it's really, really great, really awesome. Um, now, uh, when they pick them up, it's got a huge internal storage, uh, which is great. And you can also suck up XP from mobs, and you can get the XP with this button, or you can hold a screwdriver in your hand, crouch, and right-click it, which if I had any XP in there, it would get, it would have given it to me. Um, and you can use item pipes to transfer items out of this thing. So um, I've used item ducts from Thermal Expansion. Those work. you got to put a, a servo in them or give them a redstone signal, but they do work. So um, you can use this to suck items up, and you can put them into systems like an apply energistic system or anything. And you saw that massive range. So this thing is very powerful for what it does. Much more powerful than something like this, so uh, vacuum hopper. So um, I would totally recommend using the item vacuum. So I'm probably going to later uh, build a really big farm. Like, this entire area gets serviced by this thing, which means you could have a farm that big and put this at the center, and it would suck everything up, which is it's fantastic. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to use the sonic bore in conjunction with the item vacuum in what I think is one of the simplest ways to use these in conjunction with each other. So let's drop down here into our chasm, into the shaft that we dug with the tunnel bore, and ugh, we got some jokers here. And let me quick shift this into peaceful difficulty to get rid of them. And let me drop some torches. Do we really need them? Torch, torch right there. Now yeah, I gotta put it. Um, no, well, this was from an earlier test, but uh, the. Um, couldn't use the video, so that was really annoying. Anyway, let's set this thing up. So the uh, sonic bore will dig a seven by seven square hole. So let's um, figure that out. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, one, two, three, and then this is where we want to put our bevel here. We'll put our sonic bore up on top of here. This is the center of our tunnel. And then, on what side is this? This is the orange side, output from there, input from there. And let me grab a dynamometer, just because. And you know what, I had an issue last um, time I recorded it. I'm not going to have that same issue this time. So I'm going to place a um, shaft here and put the sonic bore on top of that. Uh, I don't know what caused that issue. I don't know, I don't think it was the sonic bore, um, because then I had to restart my entire game because uh, I couldn't manipulate my inventory anymore, which is very strange. So I have no idea what happened. But I'm going to raise this up anyway, because what happened was that the sonic bore actually somehow mined a block that was the, the row that was underneath it. So it destroyed the the coil and everything that I was using to power it, which wasn't uh, particularly good. So let's put our other industrial coil um, here. Now turn it this way. And we're going to place our item vacuum, so I can use the same lever to turn them both on. Oops. Don't have a lever. Let's grab a lever. Lever. Come here. Did not want to come and help me. So, let's give this the output of a steam engine, because that's all it requires. 32 and 512. 512. And then we'll go down to Newton meters. We'll give it 32. And then this, we give it the 4096 that it requires. And for speed, we'll give it the 32, because that's the basic amount of speed that this requires. Is uh, 4096 Newton meters of torque at 32 radians per second is the bare minimum to power this. If we turn this on, 
I apparently have this turned out wrong way. You'll notice that the pressure is rising kind of slowly because we're only giving it 32 meters per radians per second. So the operational speed of this, again, goes up when you give it higher speeds. But what will happen is bam. <laughs> Let's turn this up to uh, 64. Bam. The sonic bore fires out a um, blast of sound, or, you know, basically a blast of air pressure. I'll give it 128. Ooh, gravel. Fell on top of our sonic board. Stupid gravel. But you see, the sonic board is mining. And with this setup that we've got here, the. Ugh, I keep getting. This is one issue with the with this system. If I'm perfectly honest, this is one issue with the system, and I destroyed the sonic bore accidentally. Is that um, since you're mining straight up, the gravel will fall on top of you. But what it does, and why I think it's a great idea, is that all the items that the sonic bore mines will fall down to the bottom of the shaft, and they will all get sucked up by the item vacuum. So let's speed this up again. At 256, I think 256 is, is really good because it, it goes at a pretty quick rate. But if you give this enough speed, I mean, it will just fly. So there we go. And our item vacuum picked up everything. And once again, the Sonic Board did the same thing. Um, I don't know why it does that, but it, it's um, it's like when it ran out of uh, of things to mine, it broke the row that was underneath it. So, yeah, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a glitch in this older version. Because remember, I have version 19B, so if there are weird issues in this version, they might have been fixed by now. But you see what the Sonic Board was able to do in not a very long amount of time. So if you are able to give it a lot of power, then it will run very quickly. But I think uh, 64 is pretty good. Um, which would be, uh, you know, about a, a half the output of a hydrokinetic engine. Um, but this is also the output of a performance engine. So... Um, I think that's really great. So I would power this with a, perform with a performance engine, um, and I would probably do it like this. If you dug all the way down to bedrock, and then you, play, you set one of these up, pointing up, I mean, you have 64, was it 64 or is it 128? It's a ton of blo of, of layers, like, like, yeah, like 128 layers of, of, of ground, especially if you're in a mountainous area. I mean, come on. Um, this system would work very well, just punching holes up. Kind of like a quarry from Buildcraft, but <laughs> a lot faster. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I have to say about the Sonic Borer. It's really, really cool, really fun, really good. Uh, just um, keep an eye on this weird sort of thing here if this happens to you. I would just recommend placing it a block above. Make sure there's no important um, blocks or machines placed at the level below the Sonic Borer if you're going to set it up like this, just to make sure it doesn't break them and then you have to pick them back up. But yeah, that's the Sonic Bore and the Item Vacuum 2 machines, which work very, very well together. I would definitely recommend using this in, conduct in conjunction with the Sonic Bore. Um, as you can see, the Sonic Bore will take power and use it whether or not it has anything to mine. It just won't do anything. Um, now, I don't know what happens if you're in the way of this blast and you're not in creative mode, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. You can test it if you want, but if it kills you, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but that's the Sonic Bore. Very, very useful. It, it will break everything. I don't know how it interacts with liquids. Um, that's the one thing I haven't actually tested, so why don't we go ahead and do that. I will turn this off, place our Sonic Bore, and then eh, we'll grab some um, water first, and we'll test that, and then we'll test lava, and then I'll be done with the episode. I just want to make sure that we've tested everything and see how it interacts. Okay, so it looks like the Sonic Bore just ignores liquids. Yeah.
Is it actually, is it ignoring them or destroying them? It's ignoring them. So it ignores liquids. Um, let's, let me shift into survival and we can just answer the question once and for all of what happens if you get hit by it. Okay, so I got hit by the Sonic Boar and it dealt half a heart of damage. So it, it won't kill you. Oops, what am I doing? So the Sonic Boar won't kill you if you get hit by it. And, uh, oh, actually, it did destroy the liquid blocks. Okay, so uh, I was wrong. The Sonic Boar will uh, remove, um, let's just place that there, liquid source blocks. Or not. That's what it seemed to do with the water, but that's not what it's doing with the lava. So never mind. Uh, the Sonic Boar um, doesn't care about liquids. And that is an issue with the Sonic Bore. So if you mine, if you use a Sonic Bore to, and you accidentally hit a lava pocket, yeah, you're in trouble if you're mining straight up from underneath. So that is a consideration to make. Um, just be careful with it because it ignores lava. It won't destroy the lava. So that's the Sonic Bore. Very, very useful. Very, very interesting, unique machine. Definitely a favorite. Definitely good for mining. Um, the item. Uh, vacuum works very well in conjunction with it, especially if you're doing the straight-up mining that I was doing. Just be careful if you're at the lava layer. Make sure there's no lava above y above you, or you might end up with some issues involving lava destroying everything. But um, yeah, it's a sonic bore. I like it a lot. So I hope you do too, and give it a try. Very useful. So I um, hope you enjoyed the episode. Next episode, we are going to talk about the last sort of mining machine, but not really. We're going to talk about the bedrock breaker. So uh, you've seen me use all these bedrock gearboxes and shafts, so let's finally, I'll finally show you how you can get that stuff. So next episode, we're going to look at the bedrock breaker, and we're also going to look at how to use what it produces to actually make uh, bedrock items. So I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.